So for the joke, I was thinking something sort of like long and like maybe over a couple of episodes, just like a a running running sort of thing. Have, have you got a plan? Like I need this written down. Yeah. Yeah. Hello and welcome to episode 9 of the Pomcast where David wastes 6 minutes of my time before we actually start doing things. My name is Jared and sitting beside me is David. Hi again. Welcome back. It's good to it, it's, hear me. Yeah, it, it's good to be back. We're doing this Slightly out of whack. We're we're doing this a day early. We're recording a day early because I have to go out tomorrow, and I'll be dead by the time I get back, knowing how I interact with the world. Bad. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> with great difficulty, with, apparently, with great difficulty. In some cases, yes. In in people people make me headbutt walls. You just gotta relax and let the flow take you throughout this universe. Follow the journey of your mind. Expand the third eye. I'm kidding, it's just a sticker, see? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the third eye doesn't sound that friendly to me, mm. or sticker-like, to be honest. Mm. Um, I was, I've was i been thinking about a couple of things this week, um, just in my general way of living, living my life, and one of them was we create these podcasts, we do them, and I'm quite enjoying it. And I can understand why people want to listen to podcasts as somebody who who has a couple that I do. Like, there are a couple that I do listen to on a regular basis, and they are really quite good. And it's but there's one that I do miss. Actually, there's two that I miss that are now no longer being produced because of different circumstances and things like that. So I was curious as to whether there's any that you listen to that have either stopped or just have naturally dissipated out to become something else. Do you listen to a lot of podcasts? No. I oh. listen to one podcast. This one. No. no so- um, <laughs> well, I have to listen to this. Well, part of it when I edit it. Uh, mainly in the start and the end. I don't. The pay- middle kind of just does whatever. Mm. Loses track and then drives a train off a cabbage. Yes. Um, I don't pay no, David I? to edit these things either. I do. Oh, you pay yourself. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I'm self-funded. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Just comes straight out of my CV. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Not my savings. Fuck you. Woohoo! Yeah. So um, I uh, listened to one podcast. That's the the Auntie Donna podcast. Oh yes, that featuring random people and a lot of a lot oh. of swearing. Oh, sometimes. Yes, most of the time. Sometimes. Auntie Donna is one of those weird comedy things that I understand how it works but at the same time i don't really appreciate it it's it's hard for me to appreciate some of the things that they do some of it i like some of it i don't but it's just very it's very polarizing they're good but not for everybody (laughs) what like the forest of cancer oh (laughs) yeah that um Damn, I knew we shouldn't have gone into the forest of cancer. <laughs> but it's it's things like that where it, it I can understand how it's funny. It's like it's like nine eleven jokes. When night when when it was you know, well, not long after nine eleven, I suppose. When people started joking about it and this is like, ooh, the cringe factor, but it is still kind of funny. And it's just But they don't do that with relevant things, they do that with things that are uh, commonly referred to as stuff that you don't necessarily joke about unless you've got quite the skill. And they do, but it's a different kind of skill. It's so... I don't even know how to describe them. Yes, it is. It's all improv. Mm. All of it is improv. No, well, not all of it. Is. No, a fairly large chunk of it is. Yeah, it comes from that... A lot of the jokes or scenarios come from improv situations mm. or just just messing around. Not like hard and what can we joke? It's yeah, it's like... 
Oh, that's a thing. Let's put that in a thing. They do have a structure, but it's a very loose structure, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just not to everybody's taste. It's not something I go out of my way to watch or listen to. Because I've, I've got a couple that I listen to. There's a number of history ones. There's a very, very good BBC history one that's on um, the podcast Apple station thing. Um, I can't remember. I think it's just called podcast is the app. Um, and then the one that I really do miss was the podcasts with Nerd Cubed and John and Matt. That was hilarious, but it was so... Nobody listened to it. It was mainly because they were about like two hours this. long. Yeah, nobody listened to this, but theirs, like theirs were... 12 th- people. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I think there's 15 regulars, but some of them have... Some of them have told me that they've got a bit of a backlog, and it's like, oh, it's okay. It's not like a... You know, no, you have to listen every week, Monday. Yeah. Do it, or I'll find you and steal your children. Well, that's a bit difficult to enforce, isn't it? Yes, yeah. that's why it probably won't happen. Oh, good. Mm. Um, yeah, but, but the threat's there. Don't tell your police. <laughs> Our police? Any, the any police. police. <laughs> Just your police, you know, your local police man yeah. or woman or whatever pronoun they fucking well want. Good point. Um... But yeah, no, I I was curious because I know I listened to a couple. Another one is the Triforce podcast, which sounds like it should be about the Legend of Zelda. It's not. I assume so. <laughs> Why the fuck are you listening to that? It's three guys from the Yogcast that do it, and uh, which is Pyrian Flax, Sips, and Lewis, and well, two of them are dads, and both of them have a very unique sense of humour, I suppose. And Lewis does as well. Lewis is a strange creature, but it's quite funny to listen to. Um, I'm like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the self-deprecating podcast. We'll yeah. be here, you know, probably not that lo- much longer. We hate ourselves. Uh, um, but no, like, there's a there's a lot of them about, and there's some very good ones. There's some really crap ones as well, like this. Yeah. But, oh. um... Oh, that's a bit harsh. We'll never have gone there. I don't know. I would. Like, I uh, don't. I do? Joke. I'm confused. What? Oh, no, I've, I've dug myself Pod- a hole and podcasts. I've jumped into it. The problem with our podcast is we release it in a only a video format that if you wanted to use a portable device, you have you to... You can't. Yeah, you have to keep your phone open. Sorry. Or, or you have to pay for YouTube Red so yeah. you can listen with the screen off. Because that's a, that's a feature you need to pay $12 a month for. Yes. It's, well, it's also hard the sense that podcast apps and websites and things you need to pay for. And well, it's I don't have that much income coming in. But host, host your stuff. Yeah. Uh, Which is problematic. So that's why this is on YouTube. If you're curious as to why we were uploading it here. Uh, it's because it's too annoying to put anywhere else. For free. For free. Yeah. So, But that's fun. Because I, I don't know, it got me thinking because I, what, uh, the Triforce podcast usually lasts about an hour and I've gotten into a little bit of a habit where I will go into town and sit in a cafe and listen to it whilst I try and write, um, try and write, emphasis on the try and listen to it. But I feel I never get to the end of it because I order a coffee and I sit down and I have the coffee whilst I'm writing and listening to the podcast. And then it hits about the half an hour mark. And I sort of feel like I'm being judged by the cafe staff, and then I feel like I have to leave. Because <laughs> you've been sitting there for half an hour. Yeah, but I've, I've drunk my coffee, I've maybe ordered a croissant, it's it's okay, I've paid for things, but I don't know. And I, I know it's a strange thing, because there's the cafes that I go to are near the universities, so there's people constantly in and out doing work, and they, they were there, some of the people that were there before me, and I leave before they leave, but I just feel like I'm being judged and I'm not sure why I have that because I, I usually don't care what other people think but in that scenario it like it makes me wonder it's just like how long is too long to spend in a cafe well when they ask you to leave it's usually <laughs> a good indication yes but like is when is, they clothes clo- clothe when they clothe? clothe you yes when they when they're clothing you, you should probably leave because yeah. you know I don't know 
would you would you would you argue that there should be a ratio like a, a coffee every forty five minutes an hour or something? I like wouldn't that? argue because I don't drink coffee. All right, a tea every. 45 minutes. I'd, I'd, I'd go out for tea. That's hot chocolate every 45 yeah, minutes. Yeah, I could get on to that. Yeah. Um, there we go. Usually only have one, though. See, I, I don't want to spend too much. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. But it, mm, it's just a bit difficult because it's it's not that I go to chain cafes either where people will sit all day, plug their laptop in and set up for the entire day and sprawl their shit out over a table. Um there's an incredible amount of people that do that. Really? Yeah, because I just they? I just open my laptop don't, and type. Don't they have tables at home? Probably. Oh. Well, we don't have a table. We have a coffee table. Yeah, that's a... It's not big enough. You can't eat off it. It's what annoying. What do they have at cafes? Actual tables? Yeah. So maybe. Depends how much food they serve. A lot of them don't seem to do... Like, what I know as a cafe, they don't do... They don't sort of have a kitchen. They they prepare sandwiches and things like that to keep in a fridge to feed a buy, or Cold. birch and muesli or something like that. But it's muesli. it's not often. It's not like a cooked breakfast or there's no no kitchen. Kitch, 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 I can't talk. Kitchen. There's no kitchen attached really. With a chefin. Yeah, a chefin. A chiffon. A chevron. I think I think they're confused. Oh. Not again. No. There's a couple of places that do breakfast. One of them... Really? <laughs> I didn't know that. Well, there's... there's, But it's not... Like, there's... That's two. That's oh, no, two Aust- whole Australia's places. gotten very inventive with food. When I get... Ugh, everything God. is... <laughs> everything's very basic here. Like, people are happy if you get waffles with bacon and a fried egg. And I it's like see that's... the appeal of, like, waffles or pancakes with bacon. Like... Like... Eating them together. It's the whole sweet and salty thing. It's like dipping your McDonald's chip in the soft serve. Uh, I just don't think it tastes very nice. Well, I everybody... like sweet and salty things, hence salty, sweetie popcorn is pretty good. But that's, that's like so, the one Salted flavor. caramel. What? Or do you mean like but... salt? Or do you mean butter with icing sugar on it? Yeah, so, sweetie salty popcorn. Sweetie salty popcorn. It's, <laughs> it sounds sweet like a salty. four-year-old trying to describe something. To well, it's sweet the and, and, sweet and the, salty. The sweetie salty. The sweetie salty stuff, the popcorn that we that we have at the movies. I I want it, mummy. Mummy, give me give me the popcorn. Daddy, mummy, won't give me the popcorn. The, hey, the so sweetie they're, salty they're, popcorn. They're not here. Who are you talking to? Then. They're I'm, back in Australia. I'm don't... mocking you. You're making a fool of yourself, aren't you? Everyone on here thinks you're talking to your mum and dad. And they're back in Australia. What are you What are you trying to say? Do you miss them? Is that what this is? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, do you want me trying to hold it together? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, oh, it's getting all emotional answer, there for a second. If you want a serious answer to that question, yes, I miss my parents. Uh, yeah. Yes, I do miss my parents. I miss family. I miss friends. Cool. You know, that's what happens when you move 17,000 kilometers away. Yeah. Or just out of home. Yeah. Yeah, that. Mm. We just did it in a very dramatic fashion, but that's okay. Away! How far? So, as far as we can without going to space. Yeah. Actually, space might be less far. Yes, it is. Depending on how far you go. Mm. I mean, geosynchronous orbit, um, that's... 36,000 kilometers. That was probably the wrong geosynchronous. No, that sounds right. It's one where you stay on the same position as the planet rotates. So there's certain satellites that are up there. It's like you've got a big, big tack. And you just stuck it in there. But all the way in the end, a little satellite just spinning around above, above you. It'll always be there. Be your friend. Sounds like friend. You can't see. Maybe at night time. But it won't be moving. Um, so it'll just look like a star. Unless it's blinking. In which case, it might still look like a star. Because they twinkle. Can, all right, the all right. planets no, they don't stop. twinkle. Stop. So, you know, twinkle, twinkle, little star. Very educational song, <clears throat> mind you. 
Great. Um, there you go. I have no idea what you were talking about then. <clears throat> so that should be fun. Because they probably won't either, to be honest. I think it was explained amazingly. No. Uh... Damn! Yeah. It... Damn! Please don't ever teach the young. Hmm? Oh. So, okay. so to get back, get to back my point. I did have a point, I think. Um, yeah. The... I don't remember what we were talking <coughs> about. Coffee, cafes, staying in a Well, thing, how long... So, so how long do you think, if I, if I order a coffee, sit down, how long can I stay in the cafe for before I'm expected to either leave or buy another one? Am I meant to give an actual answer I'd to like this? I'd like your input into this. That's why I'm asking. You're the only other person in the room. I'll ask the chair where you sit. That's probably become sentient. Chair. Didn't respond. Rude. <laughs> um, what a prick. I don't... I don't know. I, I just stay there as long as I feel like, pretty much. Mm-mm. That's very helpful. It is. <clears throat> we'll leave that one That's to... That's what I'd do. We'll, we'll, we'll throw that question out into the ether and see whether a, a note comes back. Or a ruby... What, what are those... What are those... What were those... Eight, the magic eight ball things. Bullets. No, the magic eight ball, where okay. you shake it and it brings um, up the answer. Says, maybe. <laughs> yeah, no, or I... yes, or no, or kill Bob with a shovel. Okay. I had a very specific magic <laughs> eight ball. <Okay. laughs> uh, yeah. Um, right. Help me. <laughs> it's been tied down. Uh, oh. That's what the rope's for. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's... It's also to now make me, make well, make you listen to me have a little bit of a rant about the album that you picked for me to listen to this week. Goodbye. <laughs> I can't leave you tied down. Yes, it is Limeade by Ehiorobo. And if you don't know what I just said, it doesn't matter. There'll be information about that in the description. And oh. now you get to listen to me have a little bit of a rant about it. So I listened to the album twice, both on my... No, the first time I listened to it, I was walking to the supermarket. And the second time, I was going to work. Both times... Now, David thinks that I'm being a little bit overdramatic here. Both times I listened to it, I was so annoyed by the end of it, and I had a headache. Why do you get so annoyed? I, the, the big problem Just that can't... I have... The big problem that I have with it, um, in, in, which is one of the... Th- one of the reasons why I'm not a huge fan of modern music and modern albums to a certain extent is that a lot of them don't have a story to tell. They don't have a point. Or if they do have a story to tell, it's buried so deep within shit lyrics and repetitive sounds that it's not, it, it's rendered useless as a storytelling device. And that's what albums, good albums in my mind, should be. I... My favourite, if I had to pick a favourite, it would. There's only one contender. It would be the open opening song called Ocean View Eatery. I quite liked that. Um, there was a nice eclectic group of sounds. Um, although the one thing that did bother me was, and I presume that it wasn't recorded by actual musicians um, playing the instruments. I presume it was all done electronically on a computer. Uh, a lot of it's sampled from old records, I believe, I think. Oh, okay. He did a lot of sampling. Like, I saw of the equipment he has, and it's just, like, this tiny, tiny computer monitor. Yeah. And then, like, a really shitty, uh, like, turntable recording thing. And he just, like, grabbed loops off that and made this album. <laughs> and you're like... I pre- like, <laughs> like, I don't I don't doubt that, the, that Ehi Robo's actually put... A lot of effort into what he's done it's just it's not to my taste the synth brass that was used on a lot of the tracks was so clean and so unwavering that it was almost unnerving for me as a brass player because i'm like nobody can hold a note that steady no one you can't get that perfect it, it, it was almost like hitting an electronic keyboard that's been sent set to synth brass and it was too, it was unnerving yeah. for me to listen to <laughs> because i was like it can't be that perfect mm. Um, yeah. Th- the lyrics in the first song are almost unneeded. I don't think they actually serve a purpose other than adding something above the sounds that are going on underneath. And then it flowed on from there. It's quite a short album. It's only half an hour. Yeah. Um, the 
the one that really was quite odd, because the sounds do repeat themselves. There does seem to be a pattern. Um, a song called, it's the Roman Roman numeral for seven. So V1, V-I-I. Um, it opens with, the only thing I can like it, liken it to is a fairground organ, that sort of sound. And it's very strange. And the only thing that I could get from it was that the lyrics seem to talk about religion and stereotypes a little bit and the separation and the polarization of society. But then it just, it launches into a song called Gilderoy Lockhart, which has got like obnoxious saxophone noises, which are yeah. following us around in this country. Yeah. Um, and it, it, I don't know. It, the only thing that I could sort of draw from the album is that it's talking about security. The last song or track, I suppose, it's not really a song, called Maple Leaves, sort of breaks halfway through to have a discussion and a woman's voice comes in um, to contrast with with the man's. And I think it's... I think the entire album was talking about security and what they want, but trying to wrap it up with food and something about limes, making limeade and lemonade and things like that. Yeah, you gotta get that limeade. Yeah. It's quality drink. Apparently. Limeade. Yeah. <laughs> it's... There was, there, yeah, I can, there's a lot of things that have been taken and as inspiration from other artists. There was a guitar lick in one of them that sounded like Newton Faulkner was in the background, which was very strange. That made my ears sort of prick up and then I was very confused. I thought I'd hit next on my, my, my phone and jump to a different album. But it's not music that I would go back to listen to. It's a, it's a great experiment to see whether I'm actually able to be youthful and up to date with things, but no, no, I'm not. <laughs> well done. What do you think of his voice? I think his voice is like, it's so, like his falsetto is just, it's too smooth. It's, yes. It, it's weird. It's, it was almost very Mika-esque, um, the French singer. Um, that everybody would know from Love Today. and Yeah, but a bit slightly more mellow. Yeah. It was very... I, his pitch and intonation was quite good, but I suppose he did have a computer to help if he, if something was slightly skew if with it. But yes, he does seem to jump between his falsetto and normal voice with absolute ease. Yeah. I don't know how people do that, but they do. Singing. Mm. Nailed it. But yes, it was very strange. It was very odd. Um, give it a listen if you've got a spare half an hour. Um, I had to sort of cleanse my brain and listen to a couple of Tchaikovsky symphonies afterwards because I was like, I need structure. I need, I need things that make sense. Just gotta relax, man. No, I can't. I can't relax that much. Relax. Not that much to the point where I'm listening to something that doesn't make sense. That's why you relax. No, I'll relax when I'm dead. Well, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, exactly. Nor do you. Um, and nor did nor did Limeade to me. I mm. So that was fun, but. Thank you for trying to expose me to different things. Please don't expose to me. Okay? That's that's not okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. I like nipples, because I got two of them with your name on it. it. Took me a while to write it, because I had to use the mirror, and it's also upside down from my perspective. <laughs> so. Great, that's fantastic. It might be backwards or upside down. I think it says Doraj. Shit. <laughs> Not again. So, what have, have you got anything that you'd like to talk about this week? Cars. I love me car. Um, <laughs> As in the movie or the actual things that go vroom vroom and you drive? Cars, man. Oh, the movie. Oh, the movie. I... God. I was so in love with the movie when it came out. I can't even remember what happens. Oh, it's just like, oh, and he's a dickhead and then he goes away and he mets the rusty guy with teeth. And then there's some he's car going... that's pink, isn't there, that's a girl. Because, you know, it's the only way you can... <laughs> Am I just wrong? I've seen the movie no. probably once. No, he, he's he been driven by his truck <laughs> and he, 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 <laughs> to, the next, to the next NASCAR event. And he falls off and, well, the truck door opens and he, he's asleep in the back. And it, he ends up in this little town off the major highway. He doesn't he really know where he is. Sleep. What is this? <laughs> Well, this is what happens. This is cars. And then he gets arrested for speeding, and then... 
Oh, because he doesn't know what life's like outside of the track. So, I'm, so I don't really remember, but that the whole premise was that he then meets his idol who doesn't like younger, like, because he's an old race car, he's a Hudson, Hudson Hornet that they used to race, because NASCAR was all about beefing up cars that ran moonshine and any, everything. So this is what's going to happen in the future when driverless cars and AI combine to together. To, to together. <laughs> combined, I, I combined the words create and together to crether do you want to in know my some, mind. Do you want to know something? I don't like AI and self-driving cars, but if there was a way that I could become a car, a conscious car, yes, I'd be we quite are happy. getting there. We're trying to work on uh, brain-to-computer interfaces. They're getting along quite well. And then the next level is brain-to-brain interface. So you could have... You know, shared consciousness with someone on the other side of the planet. See, that, that that would annoy me. And then you could become so shared in your consciousness that you're basically the same person. You're one, like, entity. Yeah, let's not get into that philosophical debate because... AI and cars are going to merge, they're going to combine together... That, for to some reason, I don't have ...something an issue not quite as good as either. either. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> But yeah, the Cars, Cars is a weird movie. And then he goes on to win the championship. It's all about winning. And then there's a second one, which I haven't seen. And then there's a third one, which is not out yet. Third one's coming out. The second one is about this world event thing. And he's ostracized because he's American. And because Americans can only drive in a circle. Because Isn't that's what NASCAR is. shit? Yeah, it's fucking appalling. Okay, what about Planes? Is planes that... then spawned from that franchise. Isn't about Similar fire? universe. I, I saw the trailer. And I don't know. I, I haven't watched there that one. There was just a fire. Yeah. That's all I know. There's all those movies that there's like Bolt and things like that that my cousins were obsessed with. And I... That's a dog, isn't it? Yeah. A dog that, that is... thinks it's a superhero, but it's in the show, so it's not actually a superhero. Uh, I've not seen it. And it's confused. It's very confused. Right. Mm. So just like real dogs. Very confused a lot of the time. It makes them funny. Were you actually wanting to say something or about cars? Yeah. I don't know. It kind of just got into... Not really. This is a bit of a joke, and then the driverless car. So when a driverless car is going to take over the car, the road, yeah, that. I I personally hope not anytime soon. To well, be honest, tell that to your to your insurance agency. That will get you. Yeah, I know that's because insurance people and bankers are the worst people on the planet. They'll get you. Oh, you don't have a driverless car. Here's a thousand percent increase on your insurance. Uh-huh. They won't be able to do that. There's no way they can do that. Because but you'll be a liability on the road because statistically driverless cars will be infinitely time safer. Not infinitely times, but many, many, many times safer than people. Yeah, when they actually figure it out. Well, they've got to figure it figured out. It's got to get... It's mainly just legislation that's in the way. But then it'll do the flippy thing where... I was about to say, but then it brings it back to the point, though, that everybody who wants techno... Like, everybody says this is like, oh, it's going to make life easier. No, it doesn't. The, te- the the legislation then catches up to allow it. Then people don't have work. And because we live in a capitalist society, they don't have money. They can't contribute. They can't do anything because we've automated everything. But you still need money to go out and live your life. Yeah. It is the most appalling circle. It's just, it's capitalism driving inequality and That's and, appara- driving. and apparently an Self- easier way of life that isn't easier. It's ruining, it's ruining well-being. That's what it's doing. It's trying to strive towards, you know, higher functioning or knowledge, knowledge work, but pe- people don't have knowledge. Well, no, not, <laughs> not when, not when they're more concerned about funding self-driving cars Yet they won't actually contribute to educating the populace about how things work. Yeah. Because then you you make a dumber society that then has everything automated for them. So we achieve nothing. Oh, joy. Oh, fucking joy. And pe- people wonder why I hate the modern world. It would have been... It would have, it would have been better if the digital age just hadn't. Tell that to the podcast. Yeah, you've just offended the... Because we still would have had radio and I probably would have just done that. Yeah, but that's... Yeah, it's kind of... Yeah. No, it it's depends not. Depends how digital you want to get. I mean, but... if you have analogue radio, you yeah. digital. 
It's one of those things, though, that... It's just electronics. Yeah, but if we hadn't... Is, it was something that the big glass f- fuses and things like that were replaced by something quite a lot smaller, and that's what helped drive... The microchip? Yeah, it, it, it in turn helped develop microchips, which is the thing that's going to fuck over the planet. Nah, it's just people. Yeah, people fucking over the planet. Yeah. We shouldn't... With technology. Yeah. They, they just... they What they have done is we've sped up our stupidity. We've sped up sped our... Sped up just everything. Mm. Just everything. Yeah, I, I have so little faith in the world at the moment. I have so little faith. Although, I, this is one thing that I did want to mention. And I will have my little little bit of politics... So, France has a new president, which is Jeff. Quite, quite interesting. No, it's not Jeff. Emmanuel Macron. Jeff. He was a minister for Francois Hollande, who was the previous president of France, who was a socialist and part of the centre-left party of France. <clears throat> Neither the centre-left nor the centre-right party candidate, for the first time since World War II got to the second round of presidential voting, which determines who will be president. You had Marine Le Pen from the National Front, who is the French equivalent of Trump and Pauline Hanson and those kind of people. And you had Emmanuel Macron, who was who is an, a Europhile, so he supports the EU and the Woo. Euro and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And is also... A, he was a finance minister and, a man, and he's got a degree in economics. But he does not have a party. The party he ran under um, didn't exist until 18 months ago. Oh, nice. So he's, pr- he's been elected as the le- a leader of a Western power without a party behind him. So but there is a party now, but the first... It, it, it's, an, it's another month or two before Fran- France actually goes to the polls to elect their parliament. So if the parliament comes back as a representation of of France and his people get in, his party gets in, everything will be fine for him. But it's it's yet to be seen. So France has sort of done done things right, I suppose. They're they that because the entire world is gunning for change at the moment. They're sick of the apparent corruption of political um, parties that have been established for almost. It will in the UK for a couple of hundred years, in Australia, a hundred, hundred or so. Um, in, in, in America for pretty much since they were, um, since they became a republic. Independent. The, the, United, the United States. Since they and became went around successful. murdering all of the Native Americans. Yes. Because that's how you celebrate independence. You're welcome, America. Yep. Yes, Americans did it wrong. They had a popular vote that elected Hillary, should have elected Hillary Clinton, but the electoral colleges voted in Trump. Yeah, good work. We're, we're, we're seeing how that's going. It's been a yeah, hundred or so days. It's pretty... Oh, it's going terrible. Yeah. You know, just pretty much as well yeah. as you could imagine. Because Trump Trump really did coin the phrase, prime the pumps. Yeah, that was around before him. Um, <laughs> next, he'll be telling us that he coined the entire idea of the United States. Did he not? No. Oh, shit. Mm. But anyway, I've had my little tol- politics talk. Educated you. France has a new France has a new president. Great. Is Jeff right? No. Okay. Never mind then. Mm. Yeah. Oh. So what have you got planned for the rest of the week? What have we oh, what have I got planned for the rest of the week? What day is it? Saturday? Saturday now, yeah. I don't, days don't matter to me, so it's fine. Yeah, no. uh, tomorrow I'll do whatever I want and, you know, that pretty much continues and... Till someone tells me to do something. I'll um I'll set a reminder on my phone for Wednesday. I'll um I'll throw some notes at you. Ah, oh no. Yeah. So it'll be fine. It's a bit unfortunate. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, bye. Hey. Yeah, that's the end. Maybe this. Have a don't waste have my a time. Sleep. Don't waste my time again. You can just have a sleep. Go to sleep. Go. Watch it. Oh, I'm gonna make dinner. Go.